Hello everyone. This is a recording review of Blackboard Course Outline. What I'm going to be showing you in this recording is where things are in Blackboard. For those of you who are taking this course for the first time, I'm taking a Blackboard course for the first time. What I want to do is get started first with the Getting Started page and let you know everything that I have on the Getting Started page so you will know it based on this recording and you can go back and listen to the recording from time to time to refresh your memory on what you need to be doing. So let's start with the first section of the Getting Started page which is my instructor's information and you'll see my name, my phone number, my cell number, and my email address. So those are where you can find the content information for me on the Getting Started page. You can also find this information on the syllabi, uh, recording and art of the syllabi, which we'll be discussing next, okay? But I want to cover everything on the Getting Started page before we go to the next se section. Okay, next you have the welcome letter, which is submitted by me, and it just gives you a little bit of information about the course. Uh, so that you can refresh yourself about what's expected. I'm, I am going to also do a welcome recording letting you know about my course expectations and what's required of you and uh, what I will accept and what I will no longer accept after the deadlines have passed. The next section on the Getting Started page is a Blackboard refresher in which I'm providing you with information on where everything is and we're going to cover this in content with this recording and I'll be clicking on each one of those section areas so that you can see where information are going to be provided for you. Uh, so this is a Blackboard refresh. I recommend that you click on these links to see where everything is, where everything are and to familiarize yourself with what's needed when you get ready to, to complete this course. So the next section basically is a sample Blackboard discussion post and how it should be. You'll see I have pushed a discussion question there. And then I show you where the initial res, uh, discussion response. And you see I started off with saying according to the NSW Code of Ethics 1996, and I'm answering the question uh, basically for that particular uh, question. And as you look at the response to the peers, below that where it says response, you'll see that I provided a response and I supported my response with something from the NSW Code of Ethics looking at section 1.06. So that's what I did for the first. I identified the person name and basically you're going to look at the question, you're going to give them some feedback. If you agree, at least tell them why. So this thing says, I agree with your response uh, that this is unethical. I think you should take it a step further and say that this is a violation of section 1.6, conflict of interest of the code of ethics. So that's what I mean when I say by supporting your initial response and supporting your response to your peers. So I want you to really take some time and look at this because this is going to make a difference in you getting 100% completed versus maybe 75 to 80%. So I am going to take off when you do not respond to your peers. I'm going to deduct points when you basically uh, do not support your response or your response to your peers. So just be mindful of this and spend some time looking at this section. I also recommend that you look at your other peers posts to see how they did it. If it doesn't match yours with a reference, then maybe you're not doing something. The next section I have is a sample discussion rubrics. And if you click on the link, which you'll see below is the discussion rubrics. And so you can see what the rubrics look like. So I'm going to be deducting points for grammar, spelling. I'm going APA style format. Uh, your knowledge of the subject research and your thoughtful response to your peers. So when you look at me grading this, this is what I'm going to use to actually evaluate your post for your discussion. As we move on down to the APA handouts, 
this is the section that I provided to you. I recommend that you click on it, click on these links to see what's there. I, I posted a library resource link for you. I also posted an APA template that you can use. I posted some writing examples. This is not a writing example for your paper about how your writing example should look like and how you should be referencing and citing. Also, library uh, instruction resources are available. There's another template. And then I give you some APA writing tips uh, for social work students that you can take a look at. When you're thinking about APA, I also posted a web link for Purdue OWL. This is another way of looking at how your APA uh, six edition format should look like. So make sure that you follow that example. To take it a step further, I gave you a plagiarism workshop and quiz. So you might want to do this the first week of class. I recommend that you do this because if you plagiarize, the first offense of plagiarism basically is a zero for that assignment. A second uh, section of plagiarism could result in you getting a zero for the course grade. And if you plagiarize for a third time, you can also be asked to uh, withdraw from the program. So I want you to be mindful of that and make sure that you reference or cite everything that you're saying. It's not just about what you're saying. You need to support what you're saying by a peer review article, your textbook, uh, somewhere where you're getting that source. It's not your information. You're pulling it from somewhere, so be mindful of that. The course coordinator for this course is uh, Professor Hyatt, and that's her contact information and phone number. Uh, you also can contact me. I prefer that you contact me first, and if you have to, you can go to her about the course. There's some information about uh, how to take the exam in proctorial. This will be a proctorial midterm and final for this particular course, so be mindful that you have to use proctorial in completing this exam uh, and completing your midterm and final exam. So make sure that you take a look at this. Okay, there's also a faculty and course coordinator guide that you can look at uh, that might be available. So I can see that this link says it's hidden uh, from students, which requires a spider report. In other words, if you're not attending class, if you're falling behind, you're submitting assignment late, then we can do a professional, professional development uh, data sheet on you that identifies weaknesses and strength. So just be mindful of that. So as we go back up to Blackboard and we go to the next section, which is the syllabi, when you click on syllabus, what it will give you is a link that shows you where your syllabus are. So you will be, I recommend that you print your syllabus out and put it in a folder or uh, binder so that you can always have it so you'll know what's up, what's due, what's expected of you. In addition to that, it's a course outline. I did a recording for the syllabi and I also did a recording for the course outline that I will be providing to you. There's also a professional behavior policy that you need to review to ensure that you're meeting the, the standards there. And the student professional development rubrics, which is the spider report I mentioned earlier, should you uh, identify some weakness or show some weakness in completing the course, if you're absent from the course over a certain number of periods, if you're not uh, actively engaged in the course, if you are not responding to the assignments, uh, failing to submit the, the assignments on a timely manner, I will be completing this report. So this is what's in the area outlined for the syllabus. The next area I'm going to click on is the projects and papers. And you do have a paper in this assignment. So you have a research paper. And you see that you have to complete a five to seven page paper. Now be mindful, when you're looking at APA, so five to seven pages does not include your cover page, your abstract or your reference page. You do not have to do an abstract for this particular assignment, 
However, you must have a cover page and a reference page and at least five to seven pages after that. So if you're doing five pages of information, then your total paper pages should be seven. If you're doing seven pages, then your total paper pages should be nine, which would include a cover page and a reference page. You, you have also the requirements for this particular paper, one through four, so make sure that you respond to each one of those sections. Also that you answer each of the questions in each one of those sections, because if you fail to complete a section, that can result in you receiving a lower grade uh, for this particular assignment. So I will be looking where under history that you're responding uh, to uh, basically the instrumental and development section and why the social work feels that uh, there was a need for the uniform court. And when you look at number two, the current and comparison, I want to make sure that you answer each one of those questions in that area. So make sure that you tick and print this outline so when you're completing your paper that you respond to each one of those sections. So I, in your paper, I should see a header under history. I should see a header under current and comparison. And I should see a, a header for ethical dilemma and then, of course, your conclusion. Just remember, sometimes in APA, it also requires that you, have, you do an introductory page, but just know that I'm looking for one through four in your paper and that you respond to each one of the questions in each one of those sections. So just be mindful that you need to complete this assignment in detail to ensure that you do not lose points in this area. The next section I'm going to click on is your discussion section. So as we look at the discussion sections, you have a total of eight discussions, one per week. So in unit one, you have two discussion assignments, well really you have three discussion assignments that you have to complete uh, in unit one. So just make sure that you complete all three of these assignments in unit one. No, I'm sorry. You have two assignments in Unit 1. You have the Unit 1 discussion, and then you have Discussion uh, 1, Unit 2. So you have two dis ass discussion assignments in this section. In Unit 2, which would be Week 2, you have uh, an assignment that you need to complete. Just be mindful that your initial response is due on Thursday and your response to your peers are due before Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Anything after that date will not be accepted for grades and I'll cover that in my course expectations recording for you. Okay, you have a discussion one, unit three, here again that you have to complete. Uh, so just be mindful of that. You have a discussion two, unit three. So you have two discussions in unit three that you have to also complete. You do not have any discussion in unit four, so you have a different assignment that you have to complete in unit four. So unit five picks up your next discussion. And I've also posted here where the forum will be available to you. So be mindful of those dates because that will be the only time that you can actually see it. After that date, you will no longer have access to the discussion. So you have a discussion in Unit 6. You also have one in Unit 7 and 8. So those are the discussions. So just be mindful that you complete uh, the discussion for those units. Okay, I'm going to click on Tests and Quizzes. Okay, under tests and quizzes, you have your pretest in which everyone have to take the pretest and a post test. So just be mindful when you take the pretest and you click on it again, it'll be an area where you can take the post test. So just be mindful that you must complete that. What we do with the pre and post test is use it as evaluation to show that all social work students are uh, course requirements are being measured 
which is one of the reasons why you are allowed to complete your master's in one year compared to two years under the advanced standing. So it's very important that we capture this information. As I mentioned in one of the previous recordings, your midterm exam will be a remote proctorial exam. You have a week window to take that. If you look at your syllabus under the grading section, if you look under midterm, it will tell you when that midterm will open and when it will close. So it's one week long for you to complete your midterm exam. Now be mindful, your midterm exam is gonna be chapters one through six. As we go through these chapters, I will provide you with a things you need to go as a study guide to actually com complete your midterm exam. It will require to, you to read the text, look up the information so that you'll know what the correct answer is, or you'll know what you need to know about that particular area. So therefore, just be mindful, I will provide you with some information, but it's your responsibility to actually read the chapters to ensure that you have an understanding of the chapter so you can complete your midterm and final exam. Okay, the next section basically is your final exam. Again, it's gonna be a remotely proctored exam that you're gonna be taking. So you wanna make sure that you actually complete that uh, when the requirements are. So again, your dates are in your syllabus under the grading section. Uh, and it's your responsibility to make sure that you cover the material. But I will try to give you a study guide to make sure that you have some kind of aid to help you with the exam. Uh, there's also a practice quiz that's remotely proctorial. Okay, and this is a guide for students. I recommend that you do this so that you can see uh, what's going to be expected with you to familiarize yourself with proctorial and have an understanding of it. Uh, I also have a link for secure proctorial exam. You may want to click on that and it gives you some information about your exam and things that you will need to do. So you need to at least do this to install your exam so that you won't have a problem when the time comes to take your exam. Okay. The next section I want to go over is your outline, which is going to be the outline section, course outline section by units. So this is where I also provided you with information uh, for you to actually look at everything that's required of you during the first week. So as you look at this, it'll tell you you needed to take the pre and post test. Well, excuse me, the pre-test. You won't take the post test until you complete the course uh, or the last week of course. You have to review the library resources slash blackboard and your student handbook policy on behaviors and then introduce yourself as a discussion one. And then the next section basically look at are you prepared? So you must read that and follow the requirements for that. This has a lot to do with the syllabi and then of course your unit discussion. When you click on unit two, You'll have everything that you need to do in Unit 2. In other words, you can see in Unit 2, you have everything that you need to do to complete it, the page that it's on. You have your PowerPoints for each one of the units. You have Discussion 1, Unit 2, and then Discussion 2, Unit 2. So you have two discussions under Unit 2 that you need to complete. I recommend that you post your initial response no later than Thursday. And respond to your peers before Sunday at 11.59. As we look at Unit 3, here again it's the same format where you have your Discussion 1, Unit 3, Discussion 2, Unit 3, everything that you need to be completing in Unit 3. Unit 4, here again you have an assignment that you have to complete, 5.5. You also have a value journal that you have to complete and post no later than Sunday. So you want to be mindful that you complete all of these assignments because this is going to also be 20% of your grade uh, that you complete all of those assignments. 
failed to complete any would result in you receiving a lesser grade average for this particular assignment. When you click on Unit 5, it lists everything that you should be doing in Unit 5. Now, one thing I didn't cover is that when you go to Papers and Project, it has some things there. You ha it had your paper there. But when you click on Unit 5 Assignment, what you will find is that you have when this is due. Unit 5 is due Sunday, September the 13th. You just need to upload it here. You click on Browse My Computer, find your document for this particular assignment, and submit it. And it will come to me in Gradebook. So your unit assignments, your journals, all of those are located under the unit section for completion. Unit 6, when you click on Unit 6, you'll see your discussion for 6. What you're going to do is go to Discussion, Unit 6, and post your assignment there. For the case assignment in Unit 6, you're going to click on it right here and under Unit 6. And it'll tell you this assignment is due on October the 7th. It'll tell you what you need to be doing. Also, how you need to submit it. You just basically do the assignment in Word and then save it. And then you can upload it uh, with Browse My Computer. And then it'll come straight to, straight to me in Gradebook. Make sure that you respond to each one of the questions for this particular assignment. If you have any questions about any of these assignments, please do not hesitate to call me at 843-345-2226. Okay, as we look at Unit 7, I'll tell you what's required in Unit 7, the reading assignments and your discussion assignment, your PowerPoint. Remember, all discussion assignments should be submitted in the discussion section of Blackboard right here. Then we have Unit 8. When you click on Unit 8, uh, basically, it'll tell you everything that you need to do uh, to complete this assignment. Now, if you notice, Unit 8 doesn't show where you need to complete a post test. So, what I need you to do is go back to Unit 1 under Pre Test, click on that button. Instead of clicking Pre, you're going to click Post Test. It'll be the same questions every time. I recommend when you take the Pre Test that you answer it. And then print it and then save it on a document and so that way you can look at your answers later with compared to the text to make sure you answered the question right as you submit your pretest I I will automatically receive a response with the total number you got right and what you got wrong uh, and so remember the pretest is not so important the post test is very important because after you've actually read the information in the textbook, you should have a better understanding of the question, which will allow you to answer the question better. Uh, so I recommend that you print out the pretest, save it, and then later on, uh, look in your textbook to find the correct answers. Okay, as we move further down, where we look at announcements, Okay, you don't have any announcement yet in this page, but before I get through the night, I will post announcement with the unit assignments and what's required of you for the first week of the course starting on Monday. The next section is the calendar. As you look at the calendar, you can see that this is the start date of the calendar. Now, it lists everything that you need to be doing in all the courses and so I recommend that you uh, look at your course you find your particular course which is social work 230 as I go to social work 230 okay that's 2014 as I'm looking for it, you want to find Social Work 230, and that calendar will appear on what's required of you. I normally don't like using this because I kind of tell students what's required 
of them as they're looking at these courses and when assignments are due. That's one of the reasons why I'm also doing uh, this recording to kind of aid you in this process. So this is a calendar section and once you find 230 course, it'll give you an idea of what's expected to you of you. But I recommend that you basically uh, utilize the units for when assignments are due to give you a better idea of what you need to be doing in the time you need to be doing it in. So as we look at Blackboard Messenger, this is where you will be responding to me with questions uh, concerning the assignment. Again, I recommend that you read the chapter before you send me an email about what you do not understand uh, in the chapter, uh, which you don't understand from the reading, uh, that you give me a, a more concrete, specific question rather than just a, a general question about the assignment. Because what I'm going to re respond by asking you a series of questions to kind of get to the idea of what you're asking for. Again, this is where I recommend that you pick up the phone and call me at area code 843-345 so we can discuss the questions you may have. Because sometimes when students respond with a question, they make an assumption about uh, as though I already know what they're talking about as they relate to their question. So I just want you to be mindful of that. Uh, in addition to that, basically, uh, these are about the areas that you're going to be concentrating on uh, in regards to this particular course. Uh, I will try to keep you more update on things. And if I post any update on the assignment, I will put it in an announcement. And I will also put it on the Getting Started page. So just be mindful of that. So in other words, the study guide for the quiz, uh, should I provide you with study questions that uh, things you need to know, uh, I would be putting that in the getting started on the getting started page under study guide. So just be mindful of that. Okay, that is this recording. My next recording is going to be uh, centered around my course expectations and things that you need to uh, know about what's required of you in this particular course.